the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm going to see you. Good. 
I was finishing up singing that, it's like the Lord dropped family in my spirit. And I really believe that there's some people standing in here this morning and you are needing to see a victory with your family, with some situations in your family. I don't know who it is, but God knows who it is. But I feel that God would just want you to know today that if He cares enough to stop right here and say He sees what's going on in your family and He sees the tears that you're crying and the prayers that you're praying. He sees the chaos that seems to be going on in your home and in your family. But if He cares enough to do that today, He surely is going to bring you a victory. Our part is to trust. Our part is to trust. Our part is to give it to Him and trust. His part is to come in and step on the scenes. God, we believe that today. God, I stand in faith. I stand. Lord, just lift your hands if that's you and make it personal and declare it. You may not see it, but by faith you know it. I don't walk by what I see, but in faith I stand. I stand. I stand today. I stand today. And I declare this, Jesus. I declare this, Lord. I don't see it, but I know it. I don't see it yet, but I know the God I serve. Then I'm going to see my victory. I'm going to see my victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see my 
you have been so, so good with every breath that I am made. Oh, I will see. psalmist said I would have fainted I wouldn't have made it if I had not seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living it's not just when we get to heaven there'll be goodness there too but in the land of the living right here there's goodness too give the Lord praise this morning amen I want you to Remain standing and, and pray with me. Um, and I'll get to the message here in a moment. The last while, and I've carried some of this in my heart and in my spirit literally for years. In about the last six weeks, God has been stirring it up again and I don't know everything that God is doing with that but I've been you know I've been preaching a lot about faith and miracles and healing and if I know God at all it sounds just like the God I know and the God I serve to come in the middle of a worldwide crisis and break forth with a wave of healing and miracles and the miraculous like we have never seen. That sounds like the God I know. Amen. And so I want to pray for that. 
And I want you to pray for that. And I want to see that in this house. Amen. A release of that. And in your life, if you need healing or whatever kind of miracle that you need, I want to preach this morning for a little while with the Lord's help on only believe. Only believe. And I think God, I know God, can meet you with whatever. He's a miracle worker. And He's able to do and will do whatever you have need of today before you leave this room. Does anybody else believe that? Amen. Pray with me. Lift your voice. God, I'll get to the message in a minute. But Lord, we pray for a release of the miraculous. You're a miracle worker. We've got to see it in our day. Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, it is intended to be the norm for people who are Spirit-filled and Spirit-led. And God, I pray for it in the earth. I pray for it in this region. I pray for it in this church, Lord. God, that we'll begin to see a release of miracles and signs and wonders and healing God in all kinds of ways that we so desperately need. God, it is part and parcel of the gospel that we preach. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon you, and by your stripes we were healed. God, we God, we lay claim to that. We pray that you'd help us to receive by faith. Teach us, God, to get past our disappointments, to get past the past, Lord, and to reach out towards you one more time and believe you for signs and wonders because you're a miracle worker. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Touch our children. Touch our grandchildren. God, move in miracles, miracle healings, miracle deliverance, miracle salvation, miracles, God, signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord praise this morning. Praise God. Turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 5. chapter 5 and we'll begin reading at verse 21 if you're there say amen Mark 5 and 21 now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side a great multitude gathered to him and he was by the sea and behold one of the rulers of the synagogue came Jairus by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly saying my little daughter lies at the point of death come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live so Jesus went with him so Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him then if you would skip down to verse 35 While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Everybody say, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult 
and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumai, which is translated little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said that something should be given her to eat. God, I pray for your anointing today. I pray for you to lay your hand on me. I want to stand humbly and I want to be pleasing to you. I pray that I'd be hidden and you'd be exalted and be seen. That your name would be made famous in the earth. God, I pray that you touch people you know the points of need today. And I pray that you'd make yourself real in the room. I pray that Jesus would be in the room. I pray for the empowering of the Holy Spirit to heal and deliver. In Jesus' name, we take authority. Amen. And God's people said, Amen. God bless you. And you may be seated. Only believe. Say, only believe. I think this is something that we wrestle with. We want to be people of faith. And yet most of us have grown up in a time when, for the most part, there has been a drought in the church, a drought of the outpouring of God's Spirit. And we're hungry and we're thirsty. And in many cases, we feel like our faith has been weak. And we've seen some things here and there. But most of us have not seen the level of miracles that certainly are described in the Gospels and in the book of Acts. Did you know that's not just for then, especially when you read the book of Acts, that's what God intends to be the norm. I said that's what God intends to be the norm for the church. And we wrestle with that. We wrestle with our own faith at times. And Jesus calls us in this story, just like he called Jairus, only believe. Only believe. Say it again. Only believe. What did he mean by that? And how do I even get and rise to that kind of faith and that level of faith that God would call me to? And, and, and let me mention this just in passing. We've almost, it is so easy for us in the body of Christ, we, we tend to go to extremes. I'm not talking about a formula that is just faith in faith. And we've gone to that extreme sometimes, that if I can work up, somehow work up enough, you know, that if I do, enough, if I do the right things, and I'll touch on that some more, Lord willing, before I'm done, but if I can just work a certain formula that it will manipulate God into getting what I want. I'm not talking about faith in faith. I'm talking about faith in God. And there's a difference. Not just something you work up. God is the healer. And I know there are places where it says your faith has made you whole and he's describing that as the means by, that God works through. Faith is what opens the door for God to come in. But there is a sense in which we're not healed by faith, we're healed by God. We're healed by God through faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God is the healer. And we say, how do I even get to that kind of faith? And we know that the Word tells us in the book of Romans that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And certainly as we immerse ourselves in the Word of God, we think His thoughts and, and it is imparted to us and getting in the Word will build your faith. But ultimately, faith itself comes from God. 
In fact, and there are, are different passages and verses that I could allude to, but in Hebrews 12 and 2, he tells us when you're struggling, when you need something, look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, if Jesus is the author, when you translate that from the Greek, it literally means it, when you've got an author, the author is the creative force. The author is the one who writes the story. How many of you know God is the one who writes the story? He's the one writing your story and he wants it to be a testimony of his goodness and his blessing and his favor in your life. He's a good God. He's the author. He's the originator. So how do I even get that kind of faith? I ask God because it comes from him that when I'm wrestling with my doubts and when I'm succumbing to what I see, instead of his word and looking to my circumstances, instead of looking to him, he said you look to Jesus. He's the one that faith starts with and he can impart faith to your heart. Amen. Give the Lord praise this morning. Amen. <clears throat> and so how do I even get there? That faith comes from him. And we all have times that it's okay if we pray God, I pray that you'll give me the faith that I need to believe you and impart that to my heart. And Jesus tells this man, and all of us, I think, can imagine this man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, and he could have remained stilted in his religious tradition as a ruler of the synagogue, but he comes to the Lord. And I think most of us can understand at least a little bit of what a father would feel whose daughter is dying. He felt what any of us would feel who knows that there is no hope apart from Jesus, that Jesus is the only one who can do it. And, 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 and so he comes to the Lord and he, he makes an appeal to him Jesus, come, come with me. Lay hands on my daughter so that you can heal her. Because he had, he'd come from a lot of religious tradition, but he happened to believe that this same guy whom he had seen doing miracles for everybody else, if he did it for everybody else, surely he can do it for me. And, 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 and he's not one who would touch somebody else and not do it for me. If he healed another, he can heal my daughter. And in the course of that, in the course of <coughs> their interaction, <clears throat> Jesus tells him, he appeals for him to come and Jesus goes with him and <coughs> Jesus gives him this instruction. Do not be, come on, I'm not just talking about another sermon. I'm talking about something that'll make a difference in your life. That faith comes by hearing the word. He gives him instruction. Do not be afraid, only believe. Let me give it to you from the Amplified Version. I love this. The way it translates it, the Amplified says, do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. Can anybody relate to that? Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. No matter what your circumstance, I think God would speak that. Don't be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. What did Jesus mean when he gives him these few words, really a couple of words that I want to focus on? Only believe. Everybody say only believe. Whether it's for the salvation of a loved one, the healing of your body, to have a child when they said the doctor said you couldn't have a child to see some dreams fulfilled, to see your family saved, to see God's touch on your life, only believe. To see your marriage healed and turned around, only believe. What did he mean by that? In those just simple little words, what, what does only believe mean? Number one, only believe means to put your faith over your fear. 
to put your faith over your fear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to see miracles in my life and ministry. I want to see miracles in this house. I believe it's time. I said I believe it's time for God to come and visit his church in the miraculous again so that the miracles authenticate the message. It means you only believe means you put your... Now listen to me, I'm not, I'm just getting started and I'm gonna tell you, I'm not in a hurry. <clears throat> only believe means put your faith over your fear. In other words, don't let your doubt, your discouragement, your depression, don't let those things escalate and gain ascendancy over your faith. Put your faith up front. Put your faith in the driver's seat. Now listen to me. I caught a few details here in this familiar story that somehow I'd never caught before. The man makes an appeal and Jesus goes with him and I'll come back to that. And then the Bible says there are some I would not want to be in that some. That some, how many of you know there will always be some around? And some of them you may be related to. Some showed up and said, listen, don't bother him. She's already dead. There's no hope. Did, did you ever have some show up and tell you it's too late? It's past hope. You may as well give it up. The death certificate's already been signed. There's no way anything can happen now. And when they come and tell Jairus that, Jesus, here's something I hadn't really caught before. Jesus overhears them. You read the text. Jesus overhears them when they come and say, don't bother him, she's already dead. And I may be reading in just a little of my own interpretation, but when some come and say, don't bother him, she's already dead, it's as though Jesus turns and gets Jairus by both hands and looks him dead in the eye and says, don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Keep on believing. Don't be seized and struck with fear. You keep believing no matter what they say. Because <clears throat> you've got to put your faith over your fear. Now sometimes, are y'all hearing me? Sometimes we'll have fears to deal with. Fear can come in quick. But let me give you a little what I believe is biblical instruction here. When you're, when you're riding toward your miracle, you may have a fear or two come along, but be sure they're in the back seat and that faith is in the driver's seat holding the wheel directing where you're going. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I said you may have a few fears. We're human, but you keep them in the back seat. Don't let fear up front where he's in control. You put faith in the driver's seat. Does that make sense? Sometimes any of us, no matter how long we've been serving the Lord, are prone to, for some fears to come in. <clears throat> and to get to looking at the circumstance and to get to listening to the flesh and to get to listening to that some crowd who says it's dead and it's impossible but Jesus will look you dead in the eye and say only believe. Keep on believing. Put your faith over your fear. Don't give in discouragement. Get control of your mind by the help of the Holy Spirit. Take control of your thoughts and put fear and doubt on the run. Keep them in the back seat. Make sure faith is the one doing the driving. 
And Jesus overheard them. And it wasn't that he was living in denial, but he did ignore them. In fact, later he would put them out of the room. Come on. I'm not telling you to live in denial, but I am telling you that on occasion there will be some whom you have to ignore and put faith in the driver's seat and only believe. So when he said only believe, what does that mean? Number one, it means put your faith over your fears. No matter what you see going on in your family, no matter what you see going on around, put your faith over your fears. Number two, only believe means Take Jesus at his word. Take Jesus at his word. Folks, Jesus is a healer. And I think we have come to believe and expect and see healing as the exception. I believe according to what I read in scripture, God intended healing to be the rule and not the exception. I really believe that. And, and, and you take Jesus at his word. Now hear me. When Jairus goes to Jesus and he asks him, come with me, come lay hands on my daughter, Jesus went. I would take that as an indication that if I'm Jairus and Jesus comes with me, I would take that as an indication that he plans on doing something. He wouldn't go with me just to leave her like he found her. If he went with me, then he plans on doing something. I may not know exactly what, how, or when, but if he's going with me, he's got something in mind, baby. And there will be times when God will give you an indication. I want to do something here. I wouldn't have come if I didn't, I wouldn't have shown up if I didn't plan on doing something. If I'm here, I've got something in mind because I don't ever come and leave you like I found you. If I came along, I plan on doing something. And God at times will give you an indication. I want to do something here. I want to do something here. And when he gives you that indication, you stand on it in faith. No matter what everybody else says. No matter what it looks like. You take him at his word and you stand on his word. See, this guy, Jairus, he had to get past death when they said it was dead. She was dead and only believe. He had to get past derision. Others will do it. The devil will sure do it. The devil will get in your ear and make fun of you. If the devil made fun of Jesus, he'll sure make fun of you. They laughed him to scorn. He said, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. In fact, here's another detail I caught. Jesus comes in and say, he finds a tumult and he says, why is there all this commotion? Can I tell you, there are a lot of moments that Jesus shows up in our lives and say, what are you all torn up about? What's all this commotion? Why are you scared to death? Why, why are you going all to pieces? I'm in the room. And they deride him. And Jesus puts him out of the room and goes over top of all of that because he had come to do something. He had, by the fact that he came, he had given Jairus an indication. I plan to do something here. I've got something in mind. 
And Jairus took him at his word and he stood on that even when they were making fun and saying she was dead. Jesus said, don't be afraid. Keep on believing. Keep on believing. Only believe. Only believe. So what does this only believe mean? It means... It means you put your faith over your fear. It means that you take Jesus at his word. And it also means that we depend on faith alone. We depend on faith alone. Now let me explain what I mean by that. <clears throat> Most of the time in the body of Christ, we talk about grace and we give lip service to grace, but we depend on works. And whether it's salvation or a miracle, the instruction of Scripture is only believe. Only believe. Because here's what we think. Are y'all with me? We think, well, it, 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 if I really see God do something, I've got to pray and fast 40 days. That's what we think. I've got to pray and fast 40 days. I've got to do whatever it is. Now, obviously, there is a place for prayer and fasting. But at the end of the day, this is not about my works. It comes down to a faith issue. It comes down to only believe. It's not what I earn. It's not what I worked up. It's not what I manipulated. It's not what I made happen because of how spiritual I was. It's because when I couldn't do anything and there wasn't any hope and the only hope I had was in him and I knew I didn't deserve it and everybody else said it was impossible but only believe. And we wrestle with that. Because when God does something, this is the way he operates. He operates by faith. He operates in such a way that it comes by grace. It's not what we've done. It's entirely him. In fact, there's a wonderful verse that they're going to put on the screen. Romans 4 and verse 16 Romans 4 is describing the nature of faith and the faith of Abraham. And this is what it says. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not our works. It's him. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Don't miss that first part. It's a faith according to grace. According to grace. I depend on faith alone. It's not about what I do. It's not about my being spiritual enough. It's just because of him and his goodness. In fact, you see this guy, you see Jairus pressing past when they said she was dead and beyond hope when they're deriding and making fun. And even at one point, through some delay that he probably did not fully understand, because he goes to Jesus, gets him to come, but while he's on the way, somebody else reaches out. There's a woman with an issue of blood who's had an issue for 12 years and didn't went to the doctors and didn't get better and only got worse. 
but she pressed through the crowd. Just because there are some obstacles doesn't always mean it's not God. And she pressed through the crowd and she reached out by faith and touched the hem of his garment. Why did she touch the hem? Because that was all she could reach. She was bent over from her infirmity. She was weak. She couldn't reach any more than that. But she touched the hem of his garment and she was made whole. And he said, I felt virtue. I felt power go out of me. Somebody touch me. And Jesus pauses to minister to her. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but if I had been Jairus, I would have been pulling on his, the tail of his robe. Hey, Jesus, I got you first. Come on. Y'all are too spiritual for that, aren't you? That's what I'd have done. Come on. I got you first. Why are you messing with this woman? But he pauses to minister to her and there's a momentary delay but then he resumes his journey and through all of it. Now, the Bible only records Jesus telling him this one time. I think maybe Jesus could have told him several times along the way or at the very least it kept rolling in Jairus' spirit, all the way, only believe, only believe, only believe. Everything he encountered, everything he came up to, every time it looked impossible, every obstacle, it kept rolling in him. Only believe, only believe, only believe, only believe. There'll be things in this life. There'll be derision and delays and all kinds of stuff. And through it all, Jesus keeps saying, don't be afraid. Just keep on believing. Just keep on believing. Just keep on believing. Just keep on believing. And today... I don't know what your issue may be. That woman that pressed through the crowd to touch the hem of his garment, she had an issue of blood. I don't know what your issue may be. But she, she said, in fact, the, the text does reflect that in her case. She said, and she, the tense of the Greek verb there, she said and kept saying to herself, if I can but touch him, if I can but touch him, if I can but touch him, anybody else ever, ever have to do that? If I can but touch him, if I can but touch him, I shall be made whole. Now, if faith... As he begins to play, if faith comes by hearing the word, and we know it does, then I'm expecting when we preach for God to confirm his word. <clears throat> I expect him to do that. The Bible says there are gifts of healings. There are different kinds. Whether you need physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, there are gifts of healings. And the healer is in the house. Only believe. 